Okay. Now, this is basically the next chapter that we would be talking about. It is extremely important, extremely important. It would basically be coming in paper four for IGCSE and paper two for the O-level math students. Um, so, yeah. Now, the thing is that in mensuration, we will only be considering formulas in the beginning for the preparation. Once we understand the underlying idea behind the formulas, then we are directly going to talk about some past paper questions. Okay, so as practice, we would be doing these past paper questions just so we save time and we are able to understand the concept. So let's get started. This is basically mensuration. And here we will be talking about some 2D shapes, some 3D shapes. We'll be figuring out their parameter, area, volume, and all of that. Okay, so let's get started. Okay. Now, the very first shape is basically this rectangle. Now, what is a rectangle? Rectangle, square, triangle, triangle. These four are shapes that we are already familiar with, right? What is parameter? Parameter is basically the sum of boundaries of any shape. For example, if I talk about this rectangle, this side, then this side, then this one, and then this one. The sum of these red sides is basically going to make up the parameter. Okay, so now we know that for parameter, we are supposed to add all the boundary sides. If I talk about this triangle, for parameter, I would be adding this side plus this side plus this side, okay? And similarly, for the square, I would be adding these four sides. And for this right angle triangle, again, I would be adding the boundary side. So what is the parameter? Parameter is just the sum of boundaries. That is it. You would come across a lot of definitions, but let me write it down below here. It's sum of boundaries, okay? Achha. Now, obviously, it depends on the shape. It could be that we have something of this type, a random figure. Let's say we have this pentagon. How am I going to find its parameter, I'll add this side, plus this side, plus this side, plus this side, plus this side. So it could be any shape in the world. The end goal is to add the boundaries. Okay. So in case of parameter, if we talk about this rectangle, it's going to be A. If this side is A, this side is also A. If this side is B, this side is also B. So it would be A plus B plus A plus B. And I can write it as 2a plus 2b. And I can take 2 common and that would give me a plus b. So this is the parameter of a rectangle. Any confusions with this? No, ma'am. No confusions. Okay. Then if I talk about square, I've added the four sides. In case of square, all the sides are same. So if one side is equal to a, the sum of four sides is going to be 4a. In case of this triangle, how many sides are coming as boundary? A, B, and C. So we have added these three sides and this is giving me the parameter, okay? So let's just forget this. This is not important, okay? Achha. Next, if we talk about this right angle triangle, we already know in case of right angle triangle, this used to be the hypotenuse side. Then one of the two sides is base and the other one is basically your perpendicular side, right? So again, even if it's a right angle triangle for parameter, you are supposed to add the three sides and that is it. For this equilateral triangle, for this isosceles triangle, again, we are adding all the sides. So it's 3A for the equilateral triangle because all the sides are same. For isosceles, two sides are same and third side. So in all these shapes, if we talk about this trapezium, trapezium is a shape of this type. You can just have a look at it. Every time when you have been asked to find the parameter, you are supposed to add the boundary side. So it says sum of four sides. So it would be this one, this one, this one, 
this one now it totally depends upon the dimensions given. If we talk about this rhombus, again, we know that in case of rhombus, all four sides are same. So I am supposed to add these four sides, right? So the idea should be clear. For a parameter, you are supposed to add all the boundary sides. That should be fine now. But what if we have a circle? How are things going to be in case of a circle? So in case of a circle, we have a formula and we use that formula, okay? This is my circle. And this is basically the radius of the circle, right? You must have heard the word radius of a circle. What is radius? Radius is just a line that is starting from center of the circle and it's touching its boundary. This boundary is basically called the circumference of the circle. This is the circumference. And if you're interested in finding out the parameter of the circle, what would be the parameter of the circle? The parameter of the circle is going to be its circumference, right? This outer boundary that I'm shading again is certainly the boundary. So you can think about it as the parameter and this parameter is basically called circumference in case of a circle. So if we talk about the boundary of a circle, that is basically called circumference. And how do we compute the circumference? We do 2 pi r. Now, in case of a circle, we are not sure about the exact dimensions, right? You do not have straight lines and you can't add the straight lines to find the parameter. You need to have some formula and that formula is 2 pi r. 2 is 2 pi is basically there on the calculators and r is the radius, okay? Then if you talk about this semicircle, semi means half, so half circle. Now this is basically your half circle. What about its parameter? Achha. Now I know in, in its parameter, I would be having this curved part, this curved part starting from that point till here, okay? So what is this curved path going to be? If the total curved path was 2 pi r. What is going to be the half of 2 pi r? Yes, please tell me quickly. Pi r. Excellent. Pi r. Very good. So this pi r is basically coming for this part of the semicircle, right? Because the entire parameter, the entire boundary was 2 pi r. So the boundary for half the circle is going to be pi r plus what is parameter? Parameter is the entire boundary. So that boundary also includes this and this. And I've just told you, if we start off from the center and if we go till the circumference or till the boundary of the circle, that is basically radius, right? So this is one radius and this is another radius. So this entire thing is going to be pi r plus 2r. So this is going to be your formula for the circumference of a semicircle. Yes. Any confusions with this? Please tell me quickly. No confusions. Ariba, Kabir, Moiz, Noor, Urwa, and Abdullah. Please be honest and tell me if you have any queries about it. No, ma'am. Okay. No, ma'am. All right. And just leave this for now. We'll talk about it later on. These are basically things that we will discover in past paper questions. Okay. So let's not talk about these. Achha. So we are done with the basic shapes, right? We know what exactly a parameter looks like in case of a 2D figure. What is a 2D figure? A 2D figure is something that does not require any space. Like it just has area. It is not occupying space. For example, if you have a piece of paper, you can put that piece of paper on your uh, table, right? That would just require some area of the table. But let's say if you have some book, if you have your phone, if you have, let's say, a cube, you know, the, the Rubik's Cube uh, we play with. So that is basically a 3D figure, right? So this was some discussion about 2D figures. Rectangle, square, triangle, circles, these are 2D figures. And we are done with their parameters. Now let's talk about their area. Now, in the beginning of parameters, initially we had some discussion about what exactly a parameter is. Parameter is the sum of boundary sides. What is the area of any 2D figure? Area of any 2D figure is basically this. If I talk about this rectangle, this is the area of the 
rectangle. If I talk about the area of square, this is the area of square. If I talk about area of triangle, this is the area of my triangle, right? So this is basically your area. How do we compute it? We have some formulas for that, okay? So if it is a rectangle, you guys would be familiar with this. In case of rectangles, we do length multiplied by breadth or length multiplied by width. So in our case, we have A and B, right? You have a rectangle. A rectangle has basically two pairs of sides. This length is equal to this length and this length is equal to this one. So just two, this length multiplied by this one, okay? Or just two length multiplied by width, whatever you are comfortable with. And that is going to give you the area of the rectangle. Now, if we talk about a square, in case of a square, it's again length multiplied by width. But in case of a square, length, width, all the dimensions are same, right? So you will do A multiplied by A and that would give you A squared, okay? So you can again think about it as L squared, length multiplied by length, because both are same in case of a square. Length is equal to breadth. Okay. If we talk about this triangle, what is the area of a triangle? It's basically, just leave this. We have two formulas for you guys. We are only going to consider the first one. It's basically one by two, half multiplied by base into height. Now, this is important. Base and height are important. You need to understand what is the base, what is the height, okay? This part... The, the, the hmm? base would be the bottom part and the height Very would be good. the... Inner. Excellent. Very good. This B is the base. This is the base. We know what exactly a base would look like in case of any shape, right? This is the base. And if you talk about the height, this is basically the height of your triangle. So it would be 1 by 2 multiplied by base into height. Now for some triangles, base, if you have been asked to figure out the height. Base would be simple every time, but height would be a bit complicated. So in that case, we will talk about past paper questions and then we will see the difficulty level, okay? Anyways, let's talk about another type of triangle that is right angle triangle. How do we find the area of a right angle triangle? Again, it is half multiplied by base into height. This is your base. And this is your height, right? Height, what is your height? If I talk about height of Kabir, if I talk about height of Muiz, if I talk about my height, height is basically the overall length of any one, right? So if it's a figure, we know what exactly height would look like, right? So this is basically the height in case of a right angle triangle. And again, the formula is same. It's one by two base into height. Okay, let's talk about the next one. Now we have an equilateral triangle and this is basically, just leave this formula, we'll talk about it later on. Again, we have base. Base in this case is mentioned as A. You, you are not supposed to write it as A, it's completely your choice. Or variables, the name of variable does not really matter. So you can think about it as the base and this again is your height. And again, the formula for area of a triangle is same because it has to be same, right? The formula is not going to vary. It has to be same. Okay. Then if we talk about isosceles triangles, so two sides are same. Again, this is the base and this is the height. So the concept is same, right? So just for, let's forget about triangles and now let's talk about the other shapes. Let's talk about parallelogram. In case of a parallelogram, for the, first of all, let's talk about what exactly a parallelogram is. Now, parallelogram has the word parallel in it, right? It has the word parallel in it. So, we have two pairs of parallel lines. This is the first pair of parallel lines. And this is basically the second pair of parallel lines. And when we are joining these parallel lines, this is basically giving you a parallelogram, okay? Next, how do we find the parameter of a parallelogram? We are supposed to add the boundary sides. We know that and this is how we do that. This much part is clear. How do we find the area of a parallelogram? Now that is important. In case of the area of a parallelogram, you are going to basically consider the height. This is the height. 
this length is basically the height and you need to have the base okay so again the area of a parallelogram is base multiplied by the height name of the variable does not matter here they have written a h because this is a in this figure but actually it is base multiplied by height so just stick to base multiplied by height okay if we talk about rhombus ma'am mm -hmm. some ma'am sometimes there are shapes where you can't really figure out what's the exactly, base exactly exactly i agree yes that is true so as i have said earlier as well we will talk about those questions in past papers right because there okay, we would get to practice that you are right very good that is okay. correct acha then if we talk about this rhombus again the parameter is going to have the sum of four sides and if we talk about its area so what do we do you basically do 1 by 2 multiplied by d1 multiplied by d2 d1 and d2 are basically the diagonals of the rhombus and if let's say someone forgets the formula if let's say if you guys forget the formula for the area of rhombus what you can do is just look at the shape and think about it logically you can just think about it logically that it is basically a rhombus it has four triangles so we can do x y z stuff to find the area so the area formulas are basically for you guys you can take your time you can think about it and uh, you can certainly just use your own knowledge in order to find the areas but if we talk about some specific formula so in that case let me just write it down this is basically one diagonal and this is another diagonal so what do we do in case of the area of a rhombus we do half multiplied by the length of first diagonal multiplied by the length of second diagonal okay so it's 1 by 2 multiplied by d1 multiplied by d2 yes any confusions with this no ma'am noor urwa what about the other students moist no, taha yes no, abdullah are you okay with this yes ma'am okay very good acha now let's talk about trapezium in case of trapezium how do we find the area it's 1 by 2 multiplied by the height multiplied by the sum of parallel sides what is a trapezium in case of trapezium this side is always going to be parallel to this side so these are basically called the parallel sides of trapezium how do we find the area it's 1 by 2 half multiplied by height multiplied by the sum of the two parallel sides of your trapezium so a and b are parallel sides okay acha now if we talk about the area of this circle this is going to be the area of your circle sorry this one my bad this is the area of the circle and this one is basically the area of your semicircle now if you have been asked to find the area of circle the formula is pi r squared what is r r is basically the radius where is r here is r okay this black line is basically your r so you do pi r squared and this is going to give you the area of circle and if we talk about area of semicircle semicircle is half the circle so it would be pi r squared divided by 2 we are just supposed to divide that area by 2 and that is it yes now if you have any questions you can ask me no questions okay i am skipping this because this is something that we will be talking about once we have a look at the past paper questions okay now now we are done with the 2d shapes now let's talk about some 3d figures now you guys can imagine what exactly a 3d figure is if you guys obviously i'm pretty sure you guys would have seen tom and jerry so tom and jerry actually are 3d figures right but you know whenever tom gets hit by something and when his skin flattens that is basically a 2d shape so you need to differentiate between 2d and 3d right okay here we have cuboid cube then this cylinder cone sphere 
hemisphere and that is it okay so we have a few shapes a few 3d shapes that we need to talk about and even if you forget the formulas the formulas would be given so don't worry about it right but i'm pretty sure when you guys will practice these formulas would automatically uh, you know would be on your fingertips like you guys would not be spending extra time in memorizing them you would be knowing them already okay now in case of cuboid and cube this is not important okay i will tell you basically we need to understand the logic behind all these formulas okay the first row basically says curved surface area and the second one says total surface area we need to understand the formula for total surface area then we will see in the question if our cube has lid we would include that if our cube is without lid we are not going to include that first of all let's talk about what exactly surface area is surface area is basically the area of the boundary side area of the side area of the side area of the side then area of the side area of the other side that is opposite to this one and all these right so if you imagine a cuboid or a cube any cuboid or cube has six sides in order to find the surface area you would have to find the area of those six sides and all those six sides are basically going to be six rectangles so how do we find the area of a rectangle we do length multiplied by breadth so that is fine as long as we have our cuboid we would be able to find the area of the surrounding rectangles and that should be fine right so when you will do that you are going to get this how i'll tell you let's consider this as first side what is the area of this side this side only it's going to be base height multiplied by height very good base multiplied by height excellent okay so this side basically has this area if i talk about this side yes if this is if this side is h what is this side going to be it's also, also going h. to be h very good so this side is also h and the area is going to be length multiplied by h yes kabir can you tell me the area of this side this one Oh, Kabir is not here. Okay, anyone else? Uh, it is a uh, mm -hmm. I multiplied by h. It's it very good. It's basically length multiplied by h. Very good, right? I know it looks like i, but it's length basically. Okay. Acha, that is fine. Yes. What about the area of this side? Anyone? Mom, height multiplied by breadth. Very good. This is also going to be base. This is also going to be height. And this is height multiplied by breadth. Very good. So this is how we find the six sides. And once you add the six sides, this is what we are going to have. Okay. But I would not be talking about these things because I am always against memorizing stuff. So we will look at the shape there and then, and then we will figure out the thing. Acha, if we have a look at this past paper question, so it is basically about these two shapes so let's talk about these two shapes now okay so it's basically a cone you can clearly see we have a cone here and other than this we have a cylinder here so let's talk about these two shapes now cone and cylinder these two okay Achha. what is this this is let me give write the headings as well this is basically the curved surface area and this is the total surface area and this is basically the volume so now we only have 15 minutes i we will only be talking about these two rows and that is it okay for the first shape we basically have a cylinder up what would be the curved surface area it is something that makes sense curved surface area this part of the cylinder i'm pretty sure you guys would have seen pepsi cans coke cans sprite cans you know these energy drinks that you guys drink so that is basically the curved part okay this is the curved part and this area 
this total area, this is the front side and the back side as well. This total area is basically your curved surface area. Okay. Now, how do we find this curved surface area? Can anyone explain me the logic behind this formula? Ma'am, it's the formula of the circle, but it's mm -hmm. maximized by the height. Very good. Okay. Like you add in the height as well. Okay. So multiply. But it's a multiply by two as mm -hmm. well because there are two circles, and then you multiply the height. Okay. And okay. Okay. I'll tell you. So yes, do you, do you guys have any paper in front of you? Any paper in front of you? Just just cut a strip. Just cut a strip of that paper, all of you. Do it quickly. I'll give you one minute. Just take out your rulers and just cut a strip of a piece of paper. Okay. A long strip. Something of this type. Yes, something of this type. Or if you have Pepsi bottles, something of that type, you know, there's a plastic thing that has the Pepsi label and that stuff. You can even use that. If you cut that, you are going to get this long strip. What is this long strip? This long strip is basically a rectangle. And if I just turn the side like this, like this, like this, like this, like this, what is going to happen? I am basically going to get something of this type. Are you guys getting this? If I just use this strip and if I round it, if I connect this end with this end, what is going to happen? I am going to get a cylinder. Do you guys agree? If I can, if I join the two ends, is that going to be a cylinder? If I join yes. this end with yes, this end, I would get a cylinder, right? So this means that this rectangular piece right here is basically an open cylinder. And I've just told you the surface area, the curved surface area of a cylinder is basically this part. Some of you said that it basically has two circles and all that. I appreciate your logic, but that is not right. Why? Because that circle part is not included. For curved part, we are only including this part, right? This part, only this part. So now look, just think about it. When I will figure out this part, what is this part going to be? We have just talked about the circumference of a circle. It is going to be 2 pi r, right? This is 2 pi r on the cylinder. And what is 2 pi r? This is going to be 2 pi r. Why? Because if you think about it again, in the past, we have joined these two points, these two lengths in order to make that circle. So this is basically going to be 2 pi r. This one and all the way till here. This is going to be 2 pi r. And what is this height? This is the height. So how do I find this area? This area is going to be the product of 2 pi r with h. This is how I got this formula. It's basically 2 pi r multiplied by h. Why? Because if I open the cylinder, if I open the cylinder, I am going to get a rectangular piece and if I talk about the area of that rectangular piece, it's basically the product of two sides. One side is h, that is clear. The other side is 2 pi r. Why? Because this is 2 pi r. And when you will open this length, this is basically going to become this length, right? So the length overall is going to be same and that is 2 pi r. Are you guys there with the logic behind it? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Noor, what about you? Yes, miss. Okay. Urva, is it okay? Okay, very good. Well done. Excellent. Take care. Perfect. Okay. So this is basic. And, and those who were not able to understand, you can also memorize this formula. But I still remember when I was in O-Levels and my brother told me this logic. Since then, I started enjoying maths. Okay. So just know the logics behind these formulas. This is the curved surface area. Now, if I talk about the total surface area, other than this, 
I should also include this part and the base of the can. So let's just forget this formula and let's just make up our own formula. Total surface area. It is going to be 2 pi rh because total surface area is going to include all the surface area. It would be the curved surface area plus the area of the top, this top and the bottom. What is the area of a circle? The area of a circle is pi r, r square. square. And what is the area of the base? That is also a circle. So what would be its area? It's again going to be pi r square. Yes, are we clear with this? Yes. Tell me all of you, are we clear with this formula for, for total surface yes, area? Yes, we are clear. Okay. And what about the volume of this cylinder? Now again, look at it logically. Let me erase all this. Achha. Now volume. This part right here is basically the area of the base. What is the area of base? It's pi r square, right? Pi r square, the base is circle. Area of a circle is pi r square. And if I multiply this base area with height, so I would get another base. And then I would get another base. And then I would get another base. And then another base, another base, another base. And then if I multiply it by H, I am going to get all the inside area of the cylinder. Okay. So that is why the volume of a cylinder is pi r square H. Okay. Just imagine that you have a cylinder. You have the base area. If you multiply that base area with height, that is basically going to cover up all the space inside your cylinder. And volume is basically space inside any object. It's the space inside any object. So that is pi r square h. Okay. Acha. Let's quickly talk about uh, what do you call this cone as well. Now we don't we do not have too many logics for this. In case of cone, this is basically the curved surface area. Now, what is curved surface area? This circular part. You guys would have seen the birthday caps that, that the you know kids wear on birthdays. This curved part right here is basically your curved surface area, and that is pi r l. Now, what is pi? Pi is there on your calculators. What is r? R is basically this length. So in case of a cone, you would be having a circle over here and the radius of the circle is basically your R. What is this L? L is the slant height. And what is H? H is this proper height, right? This is H. H is basically the height of the cap. So the curved surface area is pi R L. And if we talk about the other one, so what is that going to be? Yes. If I cross this formula, can anyone tell me what is the total surface area? That is going to include the curved surface area plus base. What is the area of the space? Pi r square. Ma'am, pi r square. Very well done. Excellent. Okay. It's going to be pi r square. So here we have total surface area and here we have curved surface area. Curved surface area is just this part of the cone and total surface area includes all of it. And this is basically the formula for volume. It's 1 by 3 pi r square h. Okay, so you need to memorize this. Now let's just forget all this and let's talk about this first question then we'll get back to this later on. Okay, now please pay attention. Okay, this is the very first question. It says volume of cone is 1 by 3 pi r square h. Thank you. That's given. Curved surface area of a cone pi r l. That's also given. Let's read the question. The diagram shows a gate post it's made in the shape of a cylinder with a cone on top. So what is this? This part right here is basically your cylinder. And this part on top is basically the cone. So this gate post is made up of a cylinder and a cone. Achha. The cylinder and the cone each have diameter 8 centimeters. What is diameter? Uh, Ma'am, oh, diameter is the like when you when you draw a line in between. 
very good excellent i get your idea okay very good both of you this is the radius if this is your circle and here is the center so a line starting from center to the circumference is going to give you the radius but if you we are joining two points of the circumference such that the line is passing through the center this is basically going to be your diameter okay so this is basically the diameter so this 8 is this length sorry this is 8 and this is also 8 because they have clearly mentioned the cylinder and the cone each have uh, the diameter as 8 centimeters the height of the cylinder is 95 centimeters so we can see that this is basically the height of the cylinder that is 95 and the height of the cone is basically this part right here and that is 15. So it is given. Okay, what is the question now? Calculate the volume of the gate post. Okay, you need to calculate the volume of this entire space. Okay, now what is the volume? Volume is the space inside any object. So for this, I would have to figure out the volume of the cylinder plus the volume of this cone. So let's talk about this question. Okay. Volume of cylinder plus volume of cone. What is the logic behind volume of cylinder? It's basically the base area multiplied by the height. Okay, so base area is pi r square multiplied by the height. And what is the volume of cone? Let's go and see. Volume of cone is 1 by 3 pi r square h. So it's 1 by 3 pi r square h. That is it. So what is the volume of cylinder pi r square? So pi, what is the radius of cylinder? If the diameter is Four. 8, the radius is going to be? Diameter Four. is 2 times the radius. Very good. So the radius is going to be 4. It's 4. And what is the height? Height of cylinder? 95. Very good. It's 95. Now I want other students to participate as well. Urva, um, Noor, Moise, Taha, Abdullah, please participate as well. Yes. What is the radius of the spoon? 4 square plus 15. Hmm. Multiply by 15. Yes. What is the radius of the cone that is the question four very good well done excellent it's four okay and abdullah can you tell me the height of the cone or anyone else what is the height of the cone height is starting from this point and it's ending at this point so what is the height it's given it's 15, 15. okay very good it's 15 next the use of calculators only. So now take out your calculators and tell me whatever you're getting as the answer for this. Make it quick. Uh, 1540 uh, pi. No, tell me the final answer. Like you can, you just plug in the value of for, pi as well. For, for 4,838. 4, okay, let's see. And what about the other students? I want all of you to find your answers and um, type them. Urva, Abdullah, Kabir, all of you. Ma'am, 4,838. Okay, let's see. It's pi multiplied by 4 squared multiplied by 95 plus fraction 1 by 3 multiplied by pi 
multiplied by 4 squared multiplied by 15. So this is basically not what all of you are telling me and I think that happened because of the square that I missed. Okay, it's 4 squared basically. So it is going to be 5026.5 but you can write the final answer as 5027. So that is going to be correct. Okay. This is the correct answer. Yes. Is it okay? Yes. Ma Very good. Okay. Let's do the second part as well. Please pay attention. I'll just take two more minutes. The second part says, show that the total curved surface area of the gate post is this. Now you are supposed to find out the curved surface area of the total gate post. This is your gate post and the curved surface area is going to include this curved surface area of your cone and then the curved surface area of your cylinder. So let's figure that out. Okay. Let's do that. Okay. So the curved surface area for cone is pi RL. It's given pi multiplied by R. What is the radius of the cone? It is 4 yes, multiplied sir. by L. Yes. Now, what is the what is the slant length, slanting length of this cone? Can anyone tell me? Can we use something that we have studied in past? Excellent. Very well done. Very good. Very good. Well done. Okay. So this 8, this 15, sorry. This 15 is known. This 4 is also given. And you are supposed to find this L. So we can find a right angle triangle at this point. So what we will do is 15 squared plus 4 squared is basically equal to L squared. And now just use your calculators and find the answer. So 15 squared plus 4 squared. And the square root of this thing is basically going to be 15.5, right? Yes, same answer. Very good. Well done. So what is the curved surface area in total? It's going to be 195.08 centimeters square for this cone only. Okay. Can you guys figure out the curved surface area for the cylinder? How do we find? The curved surface area for cylinder. Think about it logically. Imagine this outer boundary of the circle and then multiply it by the height of the cylinder, right? How do we find the outer boundary of any cylinder? Curved surface area of cylinder. Ma'am, ma hmm? if, we, if we multiply the outer boundary by uh, height, hmm. wouldn't that become volume? No. Imagine that volume was the area inside it. Okay, so we were multiplying the base area with height. This time around, I'm talking about the outer boundary. Okay, the outer boundary. The outer boundary in case of us, what was the circumference oh, of okay. the circle? That was 2 pi r, right? Yes, it was 2 pi r. So if you multiply this 2 pi r with height, that is basically going to give you the curved surface area. Are you guys able to understand whatever I'm explaining or nothing is yeah. come getting in your minds? Yes, please tell me honestly. Yeah, Urva, Noor, is it okay? Um, I don't understand the second part. The second part where we are discussing the curved surface area or like this part? Um, this part. The other okay. For now, we'll be talking about the curved surface area of cylinder. The formula is 2 pi rh. I was just telling the logic behind 2 pi rh. Curved surface area is basically the area of your cylinder, the outer area of the cylinder. So, if you imagine finding this circumference of the base or the perimeter of the base, that would be 2 pi r because this was the formula in the beginning. This is a circle 
and the circumference of the circle was 2 pi r. This red length was 2 pi r. If I multiply this red circular part with the height of the cylinder, it is going to give me the outer area of the cylinder, right? Yes. Okay. So basically, it's the formula. The formula for curved surface area of cylinder is 2 pi r h. Those who are not able to understand the logics, that's fine. Okay, it's fine. You're not supposed to understand each and everything. It's just the formula. And at your level, it's assumed that you guys would just be learning the formulas. But I was always sort of the person who hated formulas. That is why I'm telling you the logics. Okay. It's 2 pi r h. This is the formula for the curved surface area of cylinder that is it okay now what is 2 2 is a number pi is there on your calculators what is the radius of the cylinder noor can you tell me the radius of cylinder it's 4 the entire diameter is basically 8 right so we know that the diameter is basically 2 times multiplied by the radius. So, the radius would be diameter divided by 2. So, it would be 4. Okay, It would be 8 divided by 2. And what is the height of a cylinder? Yes? 95. Excellent. Very good. That's 95. Okay. So, now we are just supposed to find this value as well. So, 2 multiplied by pi multiplied by 4. Sorry multiplied by 95 and that is going to give you 2387.61 centimeter square. Now we are supposed to add these two values. Okay. So whatever you have on your calculator displays plus 195.08 and that should give you 2 1582.7 centimeter square but you have been asked to give the final answer up to three significant figures so it is going to be 2580 centimeter square and this is going to be the answer now what i assume from you guys is that some of you would have understood 60 percent of the content but most of you would be confused in these questions because mensuration is considered to be one of the most difficult topics, if I tell you honestly. And we have directly started the past paper, so that would be even more difficult, right? But by the end of this, yeah, it is not difficult for you, right? But those who have just started taking maths classes and this new students, it would be difficult for them, okay? So by the end of this week, I promise this is going to get better. So just relax. I would share the recordings on group. I would share these notes. Just go through the formulas, the logics. And if you are not able to understand the logic behind the formulas, that's completely fine. That is not part of the syllabus. But obviously, if you understand the logic behind a formula, things would make much more sense, right? Because the examiner would not ask you to find the area of cylinder or find the volume of cylinder. He is going to give you questions of this type. So there you would have to consider... You, have, you would have to think if you need to find the curved surface area or if you need to find the total surface area, there you would have to use your knowledge. And for that knowledge, you need to think about formulas logically. Okay. So that is it. And then I am going to see you guys tomorrow. Okay.